During the past several years, the fire service has benefited from NIST and UL's research on how fires develop in enclosed structures. They have taught us about how fast fires progress and how much energy is released when modern materials burn. We have learned the importance of controlling the fire by limiting the available oxygen. This research has resulted in significant changes to how we fight fires. Like many fire departments around the country, including FDNY, Los Angeles County Fire Department is changing how we approach enclosed structure fires to be consistent with this new research. All of these changes are to prevent flashover conditions from developing. We're changing a very old tradition of fire attack, but we don't flow water until at the seat of the fire. Now we are saying that it's okay to flow water above you into the smoke, which we know is fuel. This will cool the space around you. Also, by controlling the entry door, we limit the amount of fresh air that enters the building, thereby limiting the fire's growth. UL studies have shown this to be very effective in reducing temperatures and decreasing the potential of flashover. The first arriving engine to a structure fire has a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, especially if you're at scene with a three-person crew. If you are arriving with a four-person crew, one firefighter will be assigned door control while the other firefighter and captain advance the line. As the door control firefighter, your job is to control the flow path of fresh air to the fire. You are trying to keep the fire ventilation limited or oxygen deprived. When the door control firefighter arrives at the entry point, the firefighter will assess the door. If the door is open, close it until the line is ready to be advanced. If the door is locked, force entry and control the access point. The firefighter assigned to door control establishes an equipment pool. This consists of a flashlight and irons, forcible entry tools. These tools are used to keep the fire attack team aware of their point of entry in the event of a rapid egress. You do this by placing the flashlight inside the door and using a tool to sound. After the fire attack team has entered the structure, the door control firefighter places the flashlight inside the door and then closes the entry door two-thirds of the way to control the flow path. If you are the door control firefighter, you need to assist the fire attack crew by feeding the line past the door. Your hand needs to be on the attack line to assist with hose advancement or withdrawal and so you know when the attack crew is flowing water. Having your hand on the line is critical. This informs you when water is flowing so you can coordinate ventilation at the door. The door control firefighter will advise the fire attack crew of changing conditions. When the water is applied to the fire and steam is produced, the door control firefighter should open the door and allow the steam to escape. If the fire attack crew has to travel a distance away from the door, as the door control firefighter, you can enter the structure in order to better communicate the point of entry to your attack team. The fire attack firefighter pulls the attack line to the front door and prepares the line for entry by rick-racking the hose at the entrance. Once at the door, you call for water and don your SCBA and gloves. When the hose is charged, you bleed the line and check the nozzle pattern prior to entering the building. The nozzle pattern should be a straight stream. Before entry, check for heat by applying a short burst of water onto the upper third of the door. If steam is produced, you know you have heat. The next several tasks of the team is critical to limiting the fire's growth and effectively getting inside to control the fire. As the nozzle firefighter and the captain are ready to advance inside the door, the door control firefighter opens the door cautiously. Once the door is cracked open, the firefighter at the nozzle flows a straight stream at the ceiling to check the temperature. If the water is converted to steam and doesn't return in the form of water droplets, this indicates high heat at the ceiling. This is a watch out in structure firefighting. High heat at the ceiling can mean the fire is rapidly moving toward flashover. Slowing the fire's progression at this point is achieved by taking a leg out of the fire triangle. When the temperature is reduced enough to allow water droplets to return from the ceiling, the fire attack crew advances the line further into the structure. Bouncing short bursts of water off the ceiling into the smoke layer should occur while the line is advanced into the building. Be careful not to flow too much water. 
Maintain your thermal balance by flowing enough water so the heated gases contract when cooled. Too much water can create steam that expands and collapses the neutral plane. If you note a change in conditions, flow some water to check the heat. It's about building your situational awareness inside the structure. The water in your hose line is your lifeline. It is your tool to put the fire out and to keep you safe. Use it. A little water on the furnishings around you won't destroy them. However, not flowing water and crawling into a flashover will destroy you and those you are attempting to save. Numerous NIOSH firefighter fatality reports and recent incidents around the country are evidence of this statement being true. If a thermal imaging camera is available, the captain or any other member who has the tick should monitor the temperature from floor to ceiling. If you're arriving with a three-person engine, the captain will initiate door control. The captain will bring the irons and a flashlight to the entry. As a captain, you will also bring the thermal imaging camera if it's available. As the crew approaches the door, you must keep your eyes on the smoke. Smoke conditions can indicate where the fire is located and what is burning, and even the stage that it's in. This is critical information for the entry team. If the door is open and conditions indicate the fire is ventilation limited and wanting air to grow, limit the fire's growth by shutting the door. This is the captain's responsibility when the three-person engine company arrives. If the door is locked, force entry and control the access. After the attack line is charged, the firefighter specialist will assume the door control position until relieved by the next arriving unit. We understand that this is something new. Well, convince yourself of the value of this information by reviewing the research. And refer to the hands-on drill plan posted in Blackboard. And lastly, make sure you get out there and practice. Review each position. Get several repetitions in door control and advancing that line into an enclosed structure fire. And finally, if you have any questions, give us a call in training.